Hey, do you guys want to buy a kingfish? You want to live in a crazy house even though you're not crazy? Are you in the market for two-headed monsters? If you just like listening to more stories every week, then you can help me out. Go to my website, jmore.com, and click on the Amazon link on my website. If you're going to be shopping at Amazon anyway, why not help support more stories at the same time by going to jmore.com, J-A-Y-M-O-H-R.com, bleep, and then click on the Amazon link to their homepage, and then you can shop for whatever you want. Instead of me pushing a product on you, you can just simply go to amazon.com through jmore.com and get any product you want. I mean, I do a lot of favors for you, don't I? I ask you for one thing here, Henry. Go to amazon.com through jmore.com. Look, this is Harvey Keitel. Go to jmore.com. Click the link. Who's going to be okay at amazon.com through jmore.com? Say the damn words. Do me a favor. Help us out. Help keep this podcast rolling. You know how much money I got to pay Matt Cohen every week? Go to amazon.com through jmore.com and I will personally mail each of you $15 million. Part of this was made up. Hey, come see me live. If you live in Richmond, British Columbia, Vancouver, where you at? Canada. I'm going to be at River Rock Casino, March 30th. Also, come see us do a live podcast at the incredible Irvine Improv, April 4th and April 10th. Can't wait to see you guys out there. But at my donuts. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. I want to work with you a lot. Oh, yeah. Everybody seems to be ready. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the Fantastic Five, the greatest rock and roll band in the world, the Rolling Stones. The Rolling St- It's not the Rolling Stones at all. It's Matt Cohen. It's close to the Rolling Stones. And John Ferguson Cox Moore. J.J. Moore, as they called me at F.N. Brown Elementary School, gay gay moron. I love that you just realized that, or you said F.N. Brown, you just realized a few weeks ago what, what that uh, could have meant, right? Yeah, it never dawned on me that <laughs> F- Frederick N. Brown Grammar School on Grove Street in Verona, New Jersey was F. and Brown. F. Like and F Brown. F. And Brown. <laughs> and who knew it was an enormous gay bar? We're just, what are you doing there? We're just F. And Brown. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Matt Cohen is uh, helping out today. Uh, also, he's fun to talk to, as evident by the Legend of Tom Cruise podcast that we did together. Much Matthew. appreciated. It is 8 a.m. now, though, so I can't. Uh... I can't attest for my comedy skills, but we'll get it going. Well, you want some coffee? You <laughs> no, want to right. fired up? I'm all right. You want some chunky rails of Coke? Yeah. We are, That's uh, exactly what I need. We've been doing a lot of mobile fake mustache studios. Kevin and Bean of K-Rock fame are actually allowing us to use one of the empty studios. And what's great is the empty studio is right next to the functioning studio where they're recording their radio show five feet away from us right now. Yeah, so through the glass, I'm looking at Ralph Garman, I'm looking at Kevin, and uh, Lisa May's doing traffic over there, so they're... They're actually doing, they're really cool. And everybody that comes out to the live podcasts, uh, most of you are probably Kevin and Bean fans, as illustrated by when I go, hey, how many people here are here because of Kevin and Bean and the whole place applauds? I just got to tell you guys, it is the coolest thing in the world. It's humbling when, when you do a live podcast and a room gets filled up, like at the Irvine Improv. And just thanks for coming out because it's, it's, just, it's fun to do. And when we did Ryan Sickler and Daryl Wright, that was so bananas. Oh, people love that one, dude. Those two, it, it's almost like Daryl Wright and Sickler. I just, I picked them out of thin air just because they were fresh in my mind. But like, I'm envisioning them as like becoming this hilarious little comedy team because they get annoyed with each other as the it, show goes on. It's a on. perfect dynamic. Daryl's, uh, Daryl's up, up in vodka time and, uh, Sickler's telling his stories, stories about <laughs> alligators and fucking sparks goes up the stairs. Sparks goes up. <laughs> sparks comes down the stairs. And then uh, Daryl will get drunker and drunker, and then when uh, Ryan Sickler will question logic of one of Daryl's stories, 
Daryl will pause and just go, kiss my dick. <laughs> and Brian had one of the best tweets. He said that Daryl Wright looked like a black James Carville. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. He's he kind of exactly fucking that. does. We got to get him to be a pundit, man. That's the next m- career move for Daryl. Y'all got money. <laughs> Y'all got kiss my dick. Uh, I, I want to say this too. Uh, I was listening to other podcasts, uh, this week, just rifling around, not my normal ones, not, you know, WTF I really like, and, you know, I'll listen to a lot of other ones and all the other smart network shows. Yeah. I listen, you know, uh, Babylon and speaking of Garmin, yeah, yeah. bagged and boarded. Thank you, sir. There's a couple that I'm not going to name because I just don't want to deal with it, but there's a couple podcasts that were in the top 10 and lingered there, uh, at the very beginning of April. And I got to tell you. They were fucking horrible. Like, they were horrible. Like, people left their phone on. You know when people pocket dial you and you just listen in case they talk shit about you? That's the entire podcast. I was stunned. And it was, you know, it was like the sixth ranked podcast and it hung around for like two weeks. And there was a couple of them. And I thought to myself, like, Sickler's podcast, The Crab Feast, makes me laugh out loud. I listened to Marin's interview of, like, Norm MacDonald. It was great. Bagged and boarded. I loved Hollywood Babylon. And I was just... I'm curious to see if they stay there. And if so, then you become, like, the... um like uh Metallica when Garth Brooks was number one and Metallica was number two and three, you're going, do I even want to be on this chart Does anymore? Does it even count? Yeah. At what cost are we number one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I guess our audience now is built in. But you guys... Oh, a lot of times we ask people to subscribe uh, uh, constantly on Twitter too. But uh, and I can explain that. That's how iTunes ranks the podcast by the amount of new subscriptions. So if you're listening to this and you have not subscribed, if you just it's completely free, nothing, you don't have to give an email address, nothing. If you just go ahead. It makes it easier if anything, it automatically downloads every podcast right to your computer so you don't have to actively do anything. If you sub- go to iTunes subscribe to more stories Monday and Friday, it will it will be on your desktop waiting for you. Let's get bagged and boarded up and running. I mean, it's up, it's up and running. If you guys want to download that too, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You were in my trailer on the set of the CBS pilot Apple Bomb, and you and I started talking about comic books until fucking Chris Columbus bumped you. We did. How dare he? Right? You got bumped, man, by the director of fucking Harry Potter and Home Alone. I think it's okay. He was so hilariously self-effacing when he goes, "Look, if I'm going to spend 167 games filming somebody on a fucking broomstick, I want to have a good time." I couldn't that believe you awesome. see. That's how he. That's his nutshell review of Harry that's Potter. That's his Potter experience. 162 days of someone on a fucking broomstick. Oh, I bet it was too. That's the fucking scary part. I, Go, Chris. <laughs> 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 I was just up uh, in Canada. I want to thank everybody in Vancouver that came out to my show at the River Rock Casino. So hopefully, people ask me when I was doing interviews. They go, "How often do you get to Vancouver?" And I can answer that question for every city in the country. I will be there every year, like clockwork, as long as you show up. How many live podcasts will you do? Well, you know what? If you don't come, none. That's the last one. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was pretty full up there in Vancouver. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. And I had, uh, I was dying. I had walking pneumonia on the set of that pilot. And then the, you'll like this. You can hear it in the Columbus episode. Your voice is shot, dude. It's as, still as shot. The audience will know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't talk from the evening before I left. For Vancouver. So I guess that was a Thursday. So Thursday I wrapped at about 8 o'clock in the pilot. And I did not utter a syllable. I wrote shit down on a, a chalkboard like Anthony Hopkins in <laughs> Legends of the Fall. Uh, from that evening. I'm sure I, airport security love that. It was okay. because I had a, In LA it was okay because I had concierge service where they walk you through they security. Uh, but I didn't talk from I would say 8 p.m. Thursday night until I was at immigration in Vancouver. <laughs> So that's 12 hours. No, 10 hours, a little, about 10 hours. But oh. you got to, but for me personally to not talk, that's like unheard of. That's like fucking five months, dude. Ten, I, 10 hours. I don't even think I could do an hour. If I'm awake, I'm talking. That's pretty much how that rolls. I didn't realize how, I mean, I knew I talked too much. It's the one thing I wish I could change about myself, but I didn't realize how much I spoke until I could not speak and had to deflect people away from me and then then i became envious of like we all know like people that just they're quiet people they never really speak or they speak monosyllabically but when i couldn't talk at all i was amazed at how many fucking questions people had <laughs> like long weird shit it's like when i jog on the beach i'll be with like father tim and we're running i said okay i'm not in shape yet i'm not going to talk because I, I don't want to get tired i want him to get tired before me 
so I can say that I beat a priest in a running contest. And then he asked me, then he starts talking like, so how do they decide where they film a TV show? <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, oh my. Run. Yeah, like that's not like a, I don't know, yup. Like, hey, you having a good time? Yup. I could just say yup in a breath. But to go, well, sometimes the studio is owned by the network and the network owns the studio, so they'll do CBS or Adford and they rent it out. Like, there's all these long, laborious answers. But when I was trying not to talk going to Canada, everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry just rolling through, like, hey, uh, when you did Street Kings, how long did it take you to grow your mustache? Tell us about the casting process on the mafia. And I'm trying to do it with my fingers. I'm like, I'm with my fingers <laughs> acting out like two, two weeks we cast. Mustache, five five weeks. You're like that Eddie Murphy movie, man. That new one. Thousand Words? Yeah, exactly. I would have died now. I would have been dead. This, I, <laughs> that, tree, that tree would have been fucking dead to begin with. Four minutes into the podcast. I would have had it killed over and had a heart attack. Take your own axe and chop down the tree. You've been up there. You go to Canada because you worked with Kevin a lot, right? Yeah, I, I go to Toronto and Montreal. I've actually never been to Vancouver. Vancouver. You would Which love. Which I hear, I know, dude. It's like your dream city. Stoner, Canadian. Super stoner. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's really pretty. It's like San here, Francisco without any grime. So everyone says it's like San Fran meets Manhattan, kind of, because it's got... Like, meets like Oregon. Yeah, okay. It's like, like the that. woods. What, did you shoot up in Canada with Kevin? No, we shot cop out in uh, Brooklyn, basically. Brooklyn and Queens, almost exclusively. You must have loved that. Oh, there's nothing better than uh, fucking locking down a street corner at 3 o'clock in the morning in, in bed -Stuy. It's amazing. It's also amazing how quickly I went from scared to like, fuck it, I'm just going to lay here and play Game Boy at 4 a.m. on the street and not. You know what I mean? 58 days of, of doing that, you quickly forget. We got uh, A car got Molotov cocktailed one night. In like, bed -Stuy? Yeah, like 10 feet away from me. This was in Marcy. We shot a lot in Marcy, too. That's where Jay-Z's from. Yeah, Marcy totally. Playground. Marcy, Marcy yeah. son. It was, uh, it was definitely an interesting experience. What makes someone say, you know what? I'm going to go out tonight and Molotov cocktail a car. Right. Like, <laughs> like, they have I, to make it. You have to make the Molotov cocktail. It's pick not a car. It's, it's, it's not a lot of effort. Yeah. yeah, it's not an impulse. Like punching someone in the face, you go, you just swing. You've already got a fist on you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if you want to smoke a joint, you have to roll a joint. If you want a Molotov cocktail, you have to make a Molotov. There's some effort. You got to get a towel. Yeah. But there was never. Did the cops come by? Or no, there was nothing. There just nothing. Oh, really? A fire truck came by later, but I didn't see it. It was later in the night. And the thing is, on cop out, uh, which I, I was a PA on, you'd be so far away from set sometimes and other people that I feel like I was the only one in the production that knew that a car got Molotov cocktail. That happens. Yeah, I was deep, deep. You were mob deep. I was mob deep, man. And you said Tracy on that show was like just had like. A, did he have his kidney transplant yet? No, he was he was still getting sick though. And he had like he, tubes and shit hanging out of his had, legs. You said. And Kevin talked about it in his book. Yeah, he literally had a um, he had a tube going from his foot to a like a machine that would be attached to the side of his belt under his shirt. Oh, Jesus. And it constantly drained and recirculated the fluid in his foot. In his foot. In his foot, because because that's what happened. He had diabetes really right. bad. It was all public. Um, and they 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 lose their foot because of I guess clotting or whatever. It is weird. Like the diabetes chooses the foot. That it goes straight to the like foot? It's just yeah. a, you, know, you would think like an organ or like it would rot away one of your ribs. And just suddenly it's like, you know what? Diabetes hates feet. Fuck it. You're, I you're fucking hate feet. Peggy Jonah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. This guy has too much sugar. I'm fucking kicking <laughs> yeah. your ass. I'm going to kick your ass foot. It's crazy. I didn't know about that until the Tracy thing. But, but after that, like that's the thing that diabetes goes after. Your fucking feet for some reason. It's weird. And Sean Williams Scott. They don't want you walking to sugar anymore. They don't. Yeah. yeah they, they don't want you. Maybe, that, maybe that's why diabetes attacks Feet, because that's a very good point, Matt. They don't want they don't want you walking the sugar, yeah, yeah. and black people call diabetes the, the sugar. sugars. Yeah, I got the sugar. Paula Dean did too. You heard about that, right? Did she call it the sugar? Yeah, she said my mama calls it the sugars, as opposed to is that your Paula Dean impression. That was my Paula. It's Do early. It it's early. Uh, how does Paul Paula Dean talk like this a little bit? <laughs> we call it the sugars. Uh, this is like the equivalent of when Bugs Bunny would dress up like a showgirl. <laughs> that was the same level of commitment. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah. You had for that Paula Dean oh, impression. <laughs> I had the sugar, y'all. There you go. Yeah. She yeah. sometimes I lay in bed. I usually take naps to the Food Network. It's on constantly in my house, and Ina is the best to fall asleep to. Uh, but she's so fucking droll. And yeah, life. and I'll listen to that fucking mixer she has that, and it makes me fall asleep. But with Paula, I'll count the yowls. Have you seen – there's one now. Her son has a show. Jamie. Uh, where he's, Jamie Dean. I believe so. He takes his mother's recipes but undisgustingizes them, if that's a or word. Probably removes a pound of butter. Like 8,000 calories per recipe or whatever. Well, she's got one buff son this, who's like tall and there's the other son who's like less loved. 
He's Me, younger. I'm not sure which one. One this of them is. married the chick from Eastbound and Down. Oh, really? She's like, yes, ma'am. Katie, that, that chick, Katie Mixon or whatever. I think so. I could be wrong. April, the one with uh, yeah. the first season. Yeah, yeah. What were you doing? In, were you filming in Toronto? No, I just I, I'm from New York, so I used to, I've been up there a bunch of times, not for work or anything. Um, you just go to Toronto to hang out? Yeah, randomly, like trips, vacations, really? and shit. Yeah, that's such a, it's a big enough city.